is Jojo Siwa? Well, to answer that question, we must journey back in time hundreds and hundreds of days ago to like 2018, when the most pressing debate on the internet was whether or not this 12-year-old breakout reality star was tying her hair back too tight, or if the colorful clothes she was wearing were cringe. And yet, as the years went by, Jojo's career continued to gain traction stronger than the alopecia that threatened her edges. Meanwhile, several pillars of the old world of internet video began to crumble before our eyes. Shane Dawson. I was molested. I'm Jameson Charles. Desperate. Colleen Miranda Sings Ballinger. The gods looked down at them and laughed as their kingdoms fell into disrepair. And now, here we are at present day. And I've grown tired of talking fancy like this, so let's just pretend this is a segue into talking normal Nick time. I'm not trying to write the story of Gilgamesh here. This is not the supercontinent of Pangaea. Let me live. My point is, Jojo Siwa is an iconic social media star, if not slightly more controversial in the recent years. And she's had the interesting luck of batting three for three in the last month or so, when it comes to collaborating with these staple YouTube personalities who were suddenly deemed problematic, which subjects the once kid-friendly Jojo Siwa brand to a new form of backlash in the form of heightened scrutiny and guilt by association. So uh, slick that hair back and don a giant bow because today we are taking a look back at Jojo Siwa's most recent transgressions of free will to determine whether Miss Siwa is just a passive witness to all of the misdoings of these off-color creators, or a loyal friend who isn't swayed by internet drama, or an equally as bad actor with her own evil intentions, such as spreading happiness and selling t-shirts to teenagers. Shane, James, Colleen, you are on red hot standby, because we're about to dive in for a not so endorsed by Nickelodeon Studios installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello, television viewers. My name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. These are the playlists where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it down into beat by beat, step by step, like Abby Lee Miller on the show Dance Moms. Uh, I overspoke that. So that we can look at each individual and the same if it's worthy of dancing and dancing or dancing and dancing. Let's get into it. Mama, we don't have time for all the chitter chatter today that I'm used to saying because I feel like it's been a hot minute since I've recorded a video and I just really want to start talking about our cast of characters that we have in front of us today. But before we do, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. I've got merch and a Patreon where you can get bonus stuff. So much for me not chitter chattering with the old standard YouTube format. What can I say? It's here to stay. Know what else seems to be here to stay? YouTubers who do Shit. You know, like, it seems like you can get canceled as a YouTuber. It only means you're inconvenienced and, like, your publicist might have some extra late nights coming up, but your checkbook probably won't be affected. You're not going to be destitute, most likely, is what we've been seeing with the most recent cancellations of YouTubers like Shane Dawson, James Charles, and now Colleen Ballinger, who I was shocked to see Jojo Siwa was on one of Miranda Singh's last videos before Colleen's cancellation just about a month ago. The title of the video was a shocking interview with Jojo Siwa, which once you see this shocking interview, it's not only clickbait, but it's kind of gross. Emmy Form 43 Gummies said, where is Jojo? I don't know. I, I can call her and try to find out. <laughs> Hi, where are you? I'm on the toilet. You're on the toilet? Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay. Well, hope she has a good wipe. I'm gonna make sure my computer's hard drive gets a good wipe after this because I've downloaded about four different Miranda Sings videos this month and I'm pretty sure five is the threshold at which the CIA starts wiretapping my phone. And I don't want them to find out that I've been using this as a paranormal conduit to talk to past historical figures who help me validate government conspiracy theories. And I do it all using the power of flirtation. Speaking of which, excuse me for a moment. Now, oh, where were we, uh, Mr. President? Lincoln, if I was in the afterlife with you, I would finger that bloody bullet hole in your head so hard down to the second knuckle. 
By the way, did you see who gave you that gunshot wound, uh, President A.B. Waby? Was it really well-known actor John Wilkes Booth or your own Secretary of War, Edward Stanton? Oh, you didn't see because you were too busy watching the play? Well, I guess that puts my other conspiracy theory to bed. Gay. You know, there's something about watching Jojo Siwa indoor skydive and visiting Disneyland that makes me really want to carpe diem this summer. And like Jojo, I want to do it with my best, healthiest self. So I am recommitting to a health journey this summer with the help of Care Of, the sponsor of today's video. Care Of offers personalized packs of vitamins and supplements geared to help you feel your best and achieve your health goals with the accountability and incentives to help you stay on track which is super important to me because it's easy to forget to take things. But when I pull out one of these pre-portioned packages, which I love because they have my name on it and an inspirational quote, I know every day that I'm getting the best quality ingredients when it comes to supplements and vitamins without any of the guesswork that I used to struggle through. Plus it's sustainable. The Care Of packs are made with a plant-based film that makes them compostable. I love that I just got to take one simple quiz and I get an awesome assortment of science-backed supplements, minerals, vitamins, made from ingredients that are designed to help me feel and look my best. I will pay more attention to anything that has its own app on my phone and the Care Of app has an awesome way of helping you keep track of your healthy goals. You can even earn rewards for sticking to your new healthy supplement habit. There's routines and reflections which are helping me make the most of my Care Of routine. There's really no substitute for the convenience of Care Of where I get these high quality supplements and powders delivered right to my door every month. I don't have to think about picking them up when I'm at the store, and I certainly don't have to wander down the store and get overwhelmed by all of the options. I'm not trying to play with all of this guesswork when it comes to my health. That's why the Care Of Quiz asks me questions about my lifestyle, my nutrition, and my goals to help recommend the perfect routine for me. Take Care Of's quiz and see what vitamins and supplements they recommend for you. Click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen and use code NickD50 for 50% off your first order with Care Of. Thanks again, Care Of, for helping me make the most of this summer, just like JoJo. Mwah. So now that we've got JoJo and Colleen's classy toilet phone call out of the way, let's browse on over to another problematic pit of despair known as Shane Dawson's YouTube channel in a recent video called Rating YouTuber Products with JoJo Siwa. Again, this is clickbait, your honor. Let's not throw JoJo's good name into our titles just to have a three second thing of her at the end or in the middle like these two buffoons did. Of course, Shane teases it from the very beginning because he loves to be out of chronological order like that. Everybody, she's here! Do you see her face? We know I like for this. <laughs> this is really weird that 20 people are going out. <laughs> I agree, that was really weird to see. Like, watching a clown car unloading during rehearsals for a circus started by millennials with depression. Still, it's hard not to notice that along with Jojo Siwa's visit to his Calabasas compound, Shane Dawson's vlog -overse is starting to expand, introducing all new characters to not care about. There's Jared, Shane's brother, who we've already met, followed by the shy and quiet woman who works at everybody's office. Then there's Velma from Scooby-Doo and Rylan, from Shane's loveless marriage of convenience. In reality, I think that office worker is Jared's girlfriend, and live action Velma is Lizzie, the co-host of Ryland's podcast, The Sip. Apparently also the co-host of that constipated facial expression that Shane uses when it's too hard to be funny, using anything except his face. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not a joke, that's so Raven. Get out of here. Anyway, let's dive into a 90 second ad read from Timu, because Shane's got some garbage to show. This used to be all of Shane's content, and by the way, it's like going through a box of crap and being like, isn't this cool? I feel like he'd like that. No, he wouldn't. Maybe he would. I don't know. It's just me. Okay. What am I saying? Yeah, go check out my page and let me know what you think of my weird things. That sounds weird. Okay, so far this video is just Ryland and then Shane describing every little thing they do as weird. From how they exit their shitty little house to Shane's sh little non sequiturs that he uses to substitute an actual sense of humor. You can't get Shane to see that though. Someone could give him the note that he needs to develop natural charisma and he would create a racially insensitive character named Natural Charisma who survives his next Christmas movie horror parody using the power of black stereotypes. I think a lot of YouTube creators are able to just connect with their audience because to a certain extent, they're naturally funny. The YouTubers I tend to enjoy watching always seem to make me laugh or smile without seeming like they're trying to 
too hard. However, Shane Dawson has never made me laugh or smile with anything that he's put on screen. And it's clear that he is trying very hard to the point where sometimes his eyes are bugging out and he's snorting like an inbred bulldog. By 2023, I feel like Shane's become such a caricature of himself that his videos are almost 90% basic that's what she said jokes like you would hear if you chaperoned a birthday party full of 15 year olds to play mini golf and most of them had access to HBO. How many tries can we have to get it in the hole? Huh, me at the spring dance last semester. Wow, this might be the hardest one we've ever seen. Oh, I sound like Coach Thompson's wife after he started hormone replacement therapy. Like shut up you little f just be gross inside of your own mind. Down to the and taste tests that comprise almost every single video we've ever seen of Shane in the last two years. This content in Shane's channel has become so predictable, I'm pretty sure AI could write it without an issue. In fact, let's put that to the test. I'm going to ask chat GPT to make us a Shane Dawson monologue. <coughs> Honey, <coughs> it's okay, it's just the delivery. <coughs> Say hi, Toasty. Okay, I'm going to ask them to write one paragraph of a Shane Dawson YouTube video. All right, here's the dealio. Have you ever found yourself in a hardware store surrounded by all those shiny tools? Well, let me tell you, it's a dangerous place for an innocent mind like mine. So many phallic shaped objects, it's like a playground for your imagination. Now picture this, you're casually strolling down the aisles, checking out the power tools, when suddenly you stumble upon a big, sturdy drill. And let me tell you, that drill has some serious torque. It's just begging to be handled, to be gripped firmly in your hands and, well, put to good use. Now I know what you're thinking, Shane, you dirty little devil, what are you insinuating? Well, my dear friends, let's just say sometimes a drill is not just a drill. It's a symbol of power, of control, and of DIY satisfaction. So next time you're in a hardware store, keep your mind open and your innuendo radar on full blast. You never know what hidden delights you might uncover. Keep those tools handy, my little thrill seekers. Mwah! Okay, that wasn't far off. It was really, that was really Last month, Shane Dawson made a whole video about how the human race was in danger if AI ever surpassed human intelligence. But Shane, baby, I think on an individual basis, that ship has already sailed. This robot's 30 seconds of writing was already more well thought out and cohesive than your entire series that you devoted months of your life to creating. And you're still here, so I think the human race still has a fighting chance. I guess humanity is pretty resilient, despite how long it takes you to recover from a gradual hike. Anyway, after the ad, we get to greet Shane like the morning sun. Okay, I just woke up. It's very early, it's like noon. I was up all night making thumbnails, so don't judge me. I'm not going to judge you, but rather question your judgment when it comes to graphic design. I don't need to understand how these podcast thumbnails could take somebody all night if they're proficient in Photoshop. Perhaps Shane was browsing Google images with one hand and jerking off with the other. That would make perfect sense for both the timeline and how much we know Shane worships his own work. Instead of telling me how long it took you to make these thumbnails look like that, why don't you tell me me how long you thought out what those thumbnails should look like. Because all I see is a f fest of transparent PNGs with a quartet of bonus f faces, all layered together looking like a page from Where's Waldo Goes to the Food Court. You've got some white outer glow and low transparency drop shadow to distinguish each object, but what am I supposed to be impressed with here, Shane? That you photoshopped some whipped cream onto that cup of iced coffee? Well, I actually worked as a Dunkin's barista, Shane, so I know that it's actually harder to physically put whipped cream on top of an iced beverage and not gag at the sight of it mixing with the liquid and wet ice. And don't even get me started on the challenge of watching the hot UPS driver flirt with all of the teenage girls I work with, and then all I get is a dismissive, hey bud, even though it was me who put all of that extra caramel drizzle inside of his cup because I know that's how he likes it because I had a dream about him holding my hand and oh, my thoughts are making me cry. Ugh, that's how I know I'll always need therapy. And it brings to mind the idea of child labor in general. Like I think we're at a point in this country where we don't need to re-enter the era of child labor, yet since 2015, there have been a rise in child labor law violations, and at the same time, 10 states are currently trying to loosen child labor laws, making it legal for kids to work in dangerous environments, packing up cows in a meat packing plant, like what? Or working late into the night, or even as young as 14, being allowed to serve alcohol. Anywhere that adults are drinking alcohol is no place for a child. Like, what kind of 14-year-old barkeep? They're gonna be like, hey, what can I get you, an old-fashioned? Okay, hey, do you have any uh, Pokemon cards? It's 
fucking weird to me. Experts say that child labor negatively affects the health and education of the children who perform it. So make sure you're aware of the child labor laws in your state and be aware of what candidates feel on the subject so that you can vote accordingly. And if you live in a state with loosened child labor laws, then look at those companies and make sure that they're looking out for the safety of children because if you're gonna use child labor, you better be doing it responsibly. But like, listen to that sentence. Or just don't use child labor, maybe you'll hire adults to do it, I don't know. Now back to this 35 year old who had a lot of sleep in his eyes when he got on camera. Shane Dawson, what's good? I find myself continually saying this when watching Shane Dawson content, but here I go again. It is not cute when someone thinks they're trying to be cute. And Shane Dawson is doing just that when he tries to get into sweepy toddler Betty by mode. Even though he just spent 20 minutes setting up his camera and picking out a couple of trying to be cute hats to wear for us. Like mama, you washed your face and put on concealer. I think the pep is back in your step, whether you want us to believe it or not. I'm more impressed by a performer who is professional enough to come on camera with a level of enthusiasm and energy that's fun to watch even if they're sick or tired or just took a half hour break to cry about the UPS driver rejection memory that just resurfaced from 17 years ago or whatever. <laughs> He also said at one point, don't mind my hair, I literally just woke up. And my first thought was, sweetie, it's literally looked that f***ing weird this whole entire video, I just haven't had a chance to tell you yet. Was the inspiration for this era of Shane's hair journey, one part Farrah Fawcett and one part Golden Retriever? And why did he make both of those halves so distinct down the middle? It's giving Shirley Temple spit curls, screen left, with the lead singer of a Canadian pop punk band on the right. Anyway, let's get into the reviews of all of these YouTuber products that Shane starts by saying he's gonna be really honest about, and then it eh, seems a lot less than honest to me. Emma, prepare yourself. I'm gonna be brutal. Okay, fine, but aside from your morning breath, what part of this review is brutal? Because next up, it sounds like you start immediately defending the taste of this coffee from anybody who doesn't like it by claiming that they all must be jealous, even though you haven't even tried it yet. I don't know how to say this, but Emma Chamberlain doesn't think you're cool, Shane Dawson. And even if she did, that would not influence the rest of the world to think that you're cool. Emma Chamberlain Chamberlain is working with Vogue at the Met Gala, and you can't stop making references to the Little Mermaid that you saw in theaters last night. She is the cool, intriguing tastemaker like Anna Wintour, and you are the dated, desperate, valley-dwelling social climber like Kim Kardashian when she makes a TikTok. This is definitely getting a lot of hate. Like, people are just like, it tastes like garbage, ew, like, why'd she do this? What do you mean, why did she do this? She has fucking cans of drinks in Walmart. You Wish you're at home. You're making your dumbass water talk, and then you get a phone call. Ring, ring. Um, hi, it's Walmart. Can I talk to Shane? Uh, we want to give you a spot on our shelves for your Sebastian water. Bitch, me in my mercy and like trying to shove his spear in my ass. That was aggressive. Yeah, weren't you supposed to be adorably tired in this scene? Your acting is not exactly at the level of Glenn Close. More like Glenn clothes that never fit right, if you ask me. I'm glad Shane himself is at least starting to realize that it's jarring and obnoxious when he just starts wailing through his sinuses to try and sell a run-on sentence about sexual violence as a joke. Did you not get the note when I said that you're trying too hard, Shane? Your words just echoed off the kitchen walls without being funny. You're wearing the animal-shaped hat from a Korean teenager's skincare routine without being cute, and you get millions of views on YouTube without being well-liked. These are the opposing truths that we can learn about ourselves when we simply shut the f up for a minute. Like, girl, you just woody woodpeckered my f***ing brain into the ethos. I'm, I'm gone. Why are you defending this coffee? You just, you haven't even tasted it yet. Everybody's jealous. It tastes like spit. When I try it, if it tastes like spit, <laughs> I'm gonna feel really stupid. Shane, there's no reason for you to feel stupid, as long as you're aware that you look stupid to everybody else. Somewhere in between trying to embody kawaii as a 30-something sad sack, and trying to pander to a younger and cooler it girl by admitting that you're jealous of her for selling canned beverages at Walmart. Yeesh. Look at yourself. Anyway, I guess he likes the coffee, then when Rylan comes home, they're trying out Mr. Beast burgers. Another hallmark of Shane f***ing videos is that he does a taste test, or he tries five different things and he puts on a new jacket for each of them. He's been doing this dress up baloney since the 2021s. I'm so tired of it. It's like, we have seen it. We have seen it. I'm sick of your house. I'm sick of your jacket. I'm sick of your hair. Looking crazier and crazier like a goddamn tentacle porn gone crazy. Tentacle porn gone crazy is your hair. I have a surprise. It better be good. You're not even questioning why I'm wearing this. Uh, this is natural at this point and it's getting concerning that you whip it out so easily. <laughs> 
stand-up comedian. Wearing the outfit of a shitty stand-up comedian? Congrats, I feel like we can count that as finally starting to dress for your body type. Granted, you don't just live inside the body of a stand-up comedian, you make your living that way. Except in front of the internet instead of a live audience. That way you can just delete the hecklers from your comment section and justify why you can't hear anybody laughing. I understand Shane is trying to slowly project this image that he's some kind of quirky, carefree, fun friend with an eclectic, bold fashion sense. But to me, it feels at odds with where he's truly at. And it seems like he thinks nobody in the audience can recognize that he's actually cycling through the same three or four safety guards garments that he feels comfortable in, while also trying to tell us, the entire world, that he isn't that self-conscious anymore. Like, many of us have been there, girly. Just be real with it. Be real with it. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience still are going through that, where it's like they can only feel comfortable or confident in a few items of clothing. That's completely fine. It's completely normal. I've certainly been at places in my life where I can only be seen out in public wearing certain things to avoid being consumed entirely by anxiety. But if someone is doing that, yet presenting like they are only wearing or doing whatever they do as a joke, that can be invalidating to other people who are in the same position. And I think that's why people are starting to fall off the Shane Dawson train so fast. Like you can lie to everyone around you about why you're doing this or that, but especially when you have a platform like Shane Dawson, there are people who are gonna notice how fake that feels. Like, would it be so hard for Shane to say, I know that this shirt's pattern is loud and colorful, but I actually really like the fit of it and I feel like it flatters my midsection, so I'm kind of into it, I'm gonna wear it from now on. Or he could just say nothing about it. Like, like, um, I used to wear full coverage foundation to work every day to cover my cystic acne, and I didn't, I, I wouldn't talk about that. I would just hope that everybody would just be tricked into thinking that I had clear skin. And I, I really thought throughout the day, like I would delude myself into thinking that that was the convincing trick that I was doing. And it's like, um, a more healthy approach might have been to think of it like, you know what? Maybe it's clear to people that I'm wearing makeup or whatever. That still feels so much better than having my breakouts on full display uncovered. So I'm gonna take that over that. Yes. Some some people, like rude people, might make comments about me wearing makeup, but I'm still more okay with that than I am with going out bare face right now. And that's just the way it is. I wish that I had been more real with myself about what was going on rather than have people be like, why are you wearing makeup? And I'd be like, I'm not. It's like, mm, but you are, and it's okay. Both options might be uncomfortable, but one is gonna help me get out the door every day and live my life. And I think that that's important to come to terms with. I know it's all easier said than done, and Shane isn't obligated to speak with a certain level of authenticity to his audience. But if Shane is, as it looks like, dressing in what he calls crazy clothes to distract from his insecurities, I think it sends a dog whistle to other people who might be behaving in similar ways that they should continue to feel this way about themselves and their insecurities as well. And I'm not a therapist, but this rings true for me. When I watch Shane Dawson, it reminds me of a past, less secure version of myself. And I just wish if Shane could be upfront and kind of speak more about what's actually on his mind, then people would feel more comfortable watching his content because my heart goes out to anybody out there who feels like they're trapped in a body or a mindset or a situation that is just their lot in life and that they have to accept it. Because I think we all deserve the tools, the mental acuity, to improve the things that we want to change about our lives while still being okay with who we are today. And that's why influencers like Shane who trick themselves into thinking that they're being authentic can actually be harmful to the viewer. Anyway, here's a gross shot of Chris eating pizza. Oh my God, Chris, you have to try one. Oh my God. Whoa. I've never seen Shane operate with more focus or intent than when he dripped that wet slice of pizza all over Chris's face just now. He's like, so the meat lover's pizza had the best sauce to cheese ratio, but I think the pepperoni one made me the horniest. And I really appreciated how I got to slather some wet honey all over my cameraman's chin, making him all sticky and sloppy, while my older brother and fiance watched in stunned silence. At a long, long last, it's time for our VIP to arrive. Jojo Siwa. Uh, and Shane is playing it really cool with all of that. He hits a new octave for him that I did not need to hear. What are we doing? You yeah, gotta go! Come on! <laughs> I feel like this is what it's like coming home after college! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh my god, I like your jacket! Thank you! You just know that was the mustiest hug she's received all week. And she hangs out with a lot of athletically inclined women. Actually, am I allowed to just say lesbians? I feel like that's gonna save me some time. Athletically inclined lesbians. Jojo is dropping off some of her merch because I guess some of the YouTuber products that Shane wants to try out are just t-shirts. This is my indoor skydiving suit. Oh my suit. God. <laughs> you're wearing a skydiving suit? Indoor skydiving, yeah. That that's today? the best yeah. merchandise I've ever seen. You were seen. skydiving today. Indoor skydiving. <laughs> Get it through your head, Shane. I mean, obviously Jojo is willing to look past your racist scandals, 
transphobic language, and shocking behavior with minors, but if you leave the word indoor off of her indoor skydiving, she will correct you until her final breath. I never thought this would be the power struggle where they both dig in their heels so deep. Shane was like, you went skydiving before this? Jojo was like, indoor skydiving. I can't believe you jumped out of a plane and went skydiving. Indoor skydiving, so there was no plane. Did you free fall past some birds and the birds were like, oh my God, it's Jojo Siwa and she's skydiving. Indoor skydiving, no birds, birds in the sky, sky is outdoors. Indoor skydiving, indoors, tube with a fan. Ugh. Like, Jesus Christ, Shane, don't make her say it again. I think she's getting really mad. Indoor skydiving, it's like vegetarian skydiving. It's a fake thing that you do at birthday parties or if you're a very rich 20 year old. It's artificial, like your empathy for others or the tears you're about to cry. Shane clears up a few things about JoJo's sexuality. Wait, I have a question. Oh, yeah. So, and I'll probably just cut this out, but I've been calling you a lesbian today, but are you yeah. a lesbian? You are. Yeah, so such a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and girls are awesome. I think they're a lot and they're dramatic and it's very hard. No. No. <laughs> oh, Shane, drop that condescending expression of shared first-hand experience. I know, I know, women are easy to generalize and emotionally invalidate. That's why I haven't been romantically involved with a woman in over a decade and most of those people have publicly distanced themselves from me. I don't know why Shane thinks he can relate to Jojo on any part of queer lesbian dating. You're not part of that community just because you appropriated the hairstyle of Tig Notaro. Anyway, Jojo's not sticking around for long here. She's like, cool, here's my t-shirt, bye. Don't cry about it. I have y'all's back for forever. I really, I, I love you guys, but I'm more important Respect you guys. Don't cry. Don't cry. Hold it together. Don't cry. Well, Jojo, the good news is he's not crying. That's just his scrunched up gives the illusion of crying face. But overall, I agree with the sentiment of what you're saying, which is don't do that. It wouldn't be a Shane Dawson disaster piece if he weren't trying to force a sense of significance into the storyline with the same unconvincing, tearless weeping you'd see from your emotionally manipulative babysitter or a coke addicted roommate who you just caught stealing. Damn, have I never had a stable home life? I think that's a breakthrough. Goodbye, lifelong sense of loneliness. Sorry about kicking your ass just now. And it's all because Jojo Siwa said, I love you guys, but more importantly, I respect you guys. Especially those of you who I met three minutes ago and as far as I know have done nothing wrong. I'm mostly talking to you when it comes to respect. And Shane's like, thank you so much. Like, girl. Anyway, Shane finishes out the video by being very hopeful about his uncancellation. It's like, you already make millions of dollars from these videos. Let's not beg to get some celebrity guests on your podcast, but that's what he's taking away from this. I've kind of lost touch with a lot of people. It was nice to see somebody that I haven't seen in a few years and for it to still be exactly what it was before everything happened. It almost ripped the band-aid of this thing where I've been like too afraid to ask people to come on my podcast or too afraid to like ask somebody to come be in a video or something. I don't know. It just made me feel like, well, if Jojo Siwa is cool being in one of my videos and like wants to come hang out, maybe I shouldn't be so afraid to ask people. You're right. Shane Dawson fans owe a huge thank you to Jojo Siwa. She opened the door and now President Barack Obama can join Shane on his next episode called Taste Testing Toxic Orange River Water that the EPA released from enclosed copper mines. Because apparently now Shane feels confident enough to ask people to join his podcast or to be on his YouTube channel or associate themselves with him in any way despite it being against their best interests. Without that kind of brazen confidence, humankind might have never explored space. We might never eat poisonous plants. We might never implode in a homemade submersible meant to go explore a boat we've already seen. So it's one small step for Shane Dawson, one giant mm, misstep for Jojo Siwa because she got some uh, criticism for being in that video. People were like, don't, don't like it. I don't like it. I honestly don't think her appearance itself was that offensive. She honestly sounds like she was very comforting to Shane about his cancellation and let him know that she doesn't think of him as a bad person despite that, which I think is very mature of her. I'll leave it at that. Next, we go to a, another controversial cameo from Jojo Siwa when she appeared on James Charles' channel to do this trending challenge where two friends exchange their credit cards with one another and buy a bunch of stuff on each other's credit cards for the day. James starts by talking about his credit card and all of the perks that do or do not come with it. Did you know that when you buy a first class plane ticket, that does not immediately grant you access into a first class lounge? What is that? Your first, you I literally texted my bank account, my like, business manager and I was like, hi, am I like poor? poor? <laughs> At least you understood in the middle of saying that how stupid you sound. 
You know, I feel for James because I too have what some might call a gay voice. Although I prefer to describe myself as an inquisitive tenor with a valley girl vocal fry. But in either case, I've had to realize throughout my life that this particular inflection is going to make the stupid things I say sound even stupider. And the sh things I say sound sh and at times I think that's probably what's happening to James a little bit. I mean, when I serve single camera comedy levels of sarcasm or act intentionally vapid to be ironic, I run the risk of people thinking that's who I really am because the voice helps sell it. I really do sound like the pool boy at Barbie's Malibu dream house. So maybe people think I'm less intelligent than I am, but it's just one of the reasons why my story is not unlike that of Marilyn Monroe. The other reason is that I had an affair with the president of the homeowners association. The point is people like Paris Hilton, who seems believably shallow, but is actually smart, which I think is maybe how he pictures himself landing this kind of thing when he flexes his pretty girl problems. Although he's also displaying a very 20 something appropriate level of needing to shut up a little bit. A lot of his stuff sounds real privileged. Anyway, let's take a look at what James's first purchase was with Jojo's card and then what Jojo's was with his card. I just decided recently to start redecorating my home. Yeah. I need this pillow. <laughs> Uh, $15.40. Alright, we got James' money. We're fans. We got all these people. We're taking care of Wow, that's a nice total. To be fair, James Charles is also using his $500 throw pillow to do something nice for a long line of working class people, specifically by allowing each one of his housekeepers to take a picture holding it, while squawking in their faces about how it must be nice to hold something expensive for once. And to be honest, Jojo might have spent like a hundred bucks on free coffee for all of those people, but she also kept those loyalty points for herself, which is basically like stealing food out of that baby's mouth that it needed to survive, such as a free cake pop or an avocado Avocado upgrade to a regular breakfast sandwich. Selfish. Next, James goes to the mall and he meets a fan whose birthday it happens to be. So he's like, let me get something for her. Yeah, back in 2019, mom, you don't have to lie, he already offered us the free watch. Although, how about two years of Apple Care? I even know your catchphrase that you say at the beginning of every video. You're like, hello, girlfriend. I love your lashes and your looks, right? It's a nice act, but I was not surprised to see James rewarding a fan who came up and asked for a picture. I don't know if you've noticed, but in every vlog, he makes a point of showing us that people recognize him everywhere and love to ask for his autograph. He's still famous and he's still relevant and people want a selfie. Yes. Can I take a, a picture of you? Yeah, of course. Well, so what James, I get recognized a lot too, because apparently I look like a lot of people's sleep paralysis demon known as the how you're gonna die man. Apparently he shows up in your nightmares at the foot of your bed and lists off six different words that strung together give a clue about how you're gonna die. But don't be scared, that's so stupid. There's no such thing as the how you're gonna die man. I'm not the how you're gonna die man. How would I even find out how anyone's gonna die? I don't even have the how you're gonna die man's black book where the devil writes his secrets every third Sunday or whatever. It's just an example of what I'm not. I'm not him. I know how you're gonna die. Next up, a electric scooter. This is all while Jojo Siwa is like at a fancy grocery store called Erewhon. So different things. No way! Is it your, oh my god, it's the gray one? Ah! Okay, can you put that? Will you put that? Okay, we can literally drive there right now. It'll be like 30 minutes. Can you put that on hold for me? Perfect. Okay. Okay, bye. Yes! Yes! If you're wondering why James Charles at the height of his career never popped up in cameos on Disney Channel or Nickelodeon, like so many other YouTubers did, well, it's because that's pretty much what his audition looked like. You better serve that fake f***ing phone call and fake excitement, bitch. Super convincing performance. It's really almost like watching a young Kevin Spacey. Let's move on. Later on, Jojo and James meet up to go through their halls together. You have a bike? You have Louis Vuitton and I have a quesadilla. Well, to be fair, Jojo, James cannot have a quesadilla because he's a bottom. Who's flaunting their privilege now, hmm? The last thing that Jojo got on James's card is like a Harry Potter chess set. Once I make my move, then you're free to chat the king. <laughs> no! Run! No! Yes. What is it? 
I don't know why this made me think of it, but James seems like the kind of person who makes people celebrate his birthday all month long. But there you have it. The most expensive item that JoJo got with James's card was a gift for James, and the most expensive item that James got with JoJo's card was a gift for James. However, as JoJo slyly puts it right under the wire, she's already given herself a gift that all of the mega famous YouTubers seem to want. A sustainable career outside of YouTube. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you guys never miss upload from me. Let's go YouTube. Yeah, I know, girlie. I'm one of the only ones left. <laughs> Holding on strong. You got it. You got it. I don't know if he's holding on strong. I mean, he's holding on tight, as in with great desperation, but those views aren't the same. I'm just saying. But what do I know? I'm just Harry Potter. Thank you so much, James and Shane and and whatever else, Colleen Ballinger, for giving us a chance to see some Jojo Siwa on our screens. But let's make that a very rare occurrence. Jojo, you be you. Go on those carnival cruises with your ex-girlfriend, go indoor skydiving on random weekdays, and hit up Disney World just to eat the food. I don't care, I love your life. And I look forward to seeing more of you on the internet. But what do you all think of these Jojo Siwa appearances? Are you here for Jojo or not so much? Let me know in the comments below. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns on your favorite and least favorite influencers. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when the how you're gonna die man is coming down your chimney. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for speaking like a turf named JK Rowling with me today. I will see you next time.